Hi there, my name's Oshin Lunny and welcome to the Audio Talks podcast presented to you by Harman. And in this episode, we are once again recording live at Harman Explore during CES in Las Vegas as part of a special Future Trends edition of the podcast. Now, as anyone in the business of audio tech will know, it's always a good idea to chat with experts to get your bearings for the months and years ahead, to stay on the right side of the micro and macro market trends, and to make sure you give lovers of great audio exactly exactly what they need now and in the future. Now, with this in mind, a couple of weeks ago, I caught up with the great Guy Hammett from analyst firm FutureSource. He is a senior market analyst and a great friend of the podcast. So let's first listen to what Guy had to say about the year ahead, and then we'll come back to Las Vegas to chat with two true audio mavens from the Harman ecosystem. So Guy Hammett, welcome back to the Audio Talks podcast. Where are you joining us from today? I'm very from London. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, great to have you back, Guy. Now, we had a a wonderful chat last year. You kind of put us all straight on a a lot of very, very fascinating trends from the viewpoint of FutureSource. But before we launch in and ask you some similar questions again for the next year ahead, uh, for the uninitiated, what is FutureSource and what does it do? FutureSource is a research and consultancy firm uh, based in the UK. I've been focusing on technology for almost 40 years now. So in the audio space, that goes back to turntables and radios. And now, again, it's it's turntables again, looking at uh, things like wireless speakers, soundbars, headphones in a lot of detail and the, the wider music listening ecosystem. Fantastic, yes. And as a lover of vinyl records myself, I am actually standing in a room surrounded by quite a bit of vinyl. And uh, it's always great to hear how the, the vinyl love is coming back, but it's, you know, more connected and better quality than it's ever been before. So um, as we did last year, Guy, it's time to get the future view from Future Source. So I have four questions for you, which will help us to set the scene for our chat with the good people from Harmon in Las Vegas. So question number one is quite a big one. What's been happening in the audio industry recently and what does it all mean for 2024? So it's been a bit of a gloomy 2023 for the audio industry, certainly compared to the last couple of years where we saw a really strong boom as a result of um, COVID, people staying at home more, listening to music more, spending more money on their audio systems. But there's definitely, even in a gloomy 2023, areas of positivity. So the wireless party speaker market continues to go from strength to strength. Both volumes and revenues here are growing at double-digit rates. On the headphone side, TWS earbuds continue to be incredibly popular and headphones with active noise cancelling are performing really strongly. One of the interesting trends we saw in 2023 in the headphone space was a bit of a resurgence for over-ear headphones, making a comeback as people started to travel for business much more post covid Uh, that there was a real boost there. And I think across audio categories, one of the big trends we're seeing is that value of the market is continuing to outperform volume as on average consumers are spending more on higher quality feature rich devices. Mm, People are going for higher quality. They're prepared to invest more in having a luxurious experience with the bands and the music and the audio that they love. But what trends do you see from the future source perspective for the audio sector in 2024? So the headline trend will be headphones seeing its strongest year of growth since 2019. We expect Mm. volumes to increase by almost 10%. The aftermarket headphone market to be 612 million units next year. Interestingly, this growth is primarily driven by developing regions, most notably Asia Pacific, where Indian and Chinese demand for true wireless headphones is continuing to boom. On the the home audio side, wireless speakers, soundbars, we, we do expect a little bit of a quieter year, but... As with headphones, um, demand for wireless speakers and soundbars in India is, is growing really rapidly. That's definitely a market to keep an eye on in the future. And again, demand for premium devices is definitely going to outperform demand for entry-level products. Mm. Looking to 2024, there's also the technology side to, to factor in. So spatial audio is a technology that we're really excited about uh, for next year. This technology has long been commonplace in soundbars, but we're seeing it become increasingly important in wireless speakers and headphones um, for for music listening use cases as the availability of content in spatial audio booms. You know, if we look at a year ago when when we were in Las Vegas, there was just one wireless speaker 
on the market that offered spatial audio functionality. But but 2023 saw new releases from big hitters like JBL, Sonos, and Apple, and we expect this momentum to continue into 2024. On the headphone side, or almost 40% of headphones sold next year are expected to offer spatial audio, and this feature is becoming much more common at more mass market price points. So it's technology that we're really optimistic for in the future. Right now, spatial audio is primarily focused on video entertainment, but we're seeing you know a lot of growth in virtual reality in gaming and, and even new sectors like video conferencing music podcast audio i don't know if maybe the audio talks podcast might be in spatial audio in the future oh okay challenge accepted i like that very much and uh, you've just proved the old adage there that uh, what happens in vegas stays on the audio talks podcast because we did indeed record <laughs> this in person in vegas last year and we had some uh, good times which, which perhaps we won't be, be covering all on the podcast but it was absolutely great and uh, i'm loving all of these predictions uh, spatial audio for the win yes please and apac india in particular china absolutely smashing it um this is very very good news so what kind of changes have you seen in terms of what the consumers want? You know, what are their expectations and uh, what are they going to want out of 2024? So I think one of the, the big trends we've really seen develop post-COVID is that consumers are increasingly demanding products that are feature-rich. It's not, I want a, a headphone with active noise cancelling. It's what I want a headphone with active noise cancelling and all these other features that make it such a, a multifaceted, useful product. And What's really interesting is that the, the value performance of the market, as I mentioned earlier, shows that consumers are clearly now willing to pay more for these better products. So at FutureSource, we do consumer research every year on the audio market. Uh, we survey about 10,000 people and over two thirds of respondents to this year's survey stated that you know what was previously a premium technology in active noise cancelling is now either very important or important in their headphone purchasing decision. Similarly, of the respondents who are looking to upgrade their headphones in the next 12 months, the top reason for doing so was to acquire a specific feature that they were lacking in their existing headphones. And again, it's a very similar story on the home audio side. Both soundbars and Wi-Fi speakers are increasingly offering multiple connectivity technologies, features such as high-res audio, Dolby Atmos. Again, our consumer research shows that superior sound quality consistently ranks as the number one feature that consumers want in future wireless speakers and soundbars. So it's a really interesting trend to, to look out for next year. Mm, indeed. And, uh, you know, speaking from personal experience, it's like once these audio genies are out of the bottle, once you've experienced ANC or you've experienced surround in your home, Dolby Atmos, uh, high res, you know, you don't really want to pedal backwards by any stretch of the imagination. You want it better. You want it more convenient. You want a higher quality. So this is a trend line that uh, I think can only go up. But what do the latest numbers show us in terms of the overall market growth, Guy? So if we look at 2024, it's probably going to be a bit more of a year of evolution rather than revolution. You know, the home audio market is expected to climb very slightly in volumes and, and grow slightly in value. The headphone picture is more positive. 2024 volumes growing 9% and value growing 11% to hit 612 million units and $64 billion of retail value. Ooh. Yeah. If we look beyond 2024, we're hoping that uh, the kind of global economic picture is going to look a lot better then. And we do think that the long-term outlook for audio looks really bright. There's new technologies such as Bluetooth low energy, ultra wideband, Dolby Atmos Flex Connect, uh, and, and many others that are going to support continued growth in the market. And by 2027, FutureSource predicts that the combined home audio and headphone markets will be worth over $100 billion dollars. Wow. Okay. As to our dear listeners, uh, I am doing the mind blown emoji with my hands uh, next to my head here in the podcast studio. That's a serious amount of growth ahead. Okay. Good times to look forward to, uh, you know, everyone with higher quality audio, better devices uh, in more places in the world. Uh, this is just the news I was hoping to hear. So listen, thank you so much for joining us, Guy Hammett. Thank you very much for having me. So folks, if you have any questions about the audio markets, do please feel free to get in touch with Guy directly on LinkedIn. In. We'll put a link into his profile in the show notes. And now our podcast listeners and myself are going to go back to the future as we rejoin the team in Las Vegas.
Okay, so we're now recording live in Las Vegas at Harmon Explore 2024, and I'm thrilled to be joined by two Harmon legends. Welcome to the podcast, Carlson Olison, the president of Consumer Audio. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Awesome. Great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. And welcome to the podcast, Evelyn Heinbach, strategy leader of Consumer Audio and Professional Solutions. Hi, Olsen. It's great to be here and uh, be on the podcast together with you and Karsten. Fantastic. Okay. Now, for the benefit of our listeners, if they haven't met you already, I wonder, could you just tell us a little bit about what you do at Harman? And we'll start with your good stuff, Karsten. Since 2019 or 18, I had the privilege to lead the Harman's consumer business. And uh, before that, I have uh, had many, many years in, in Harman. Uh, actually, on 1st of August 24, I will have 30 years in Harman in wow. many, many different positions. And what I'm doing in Harman, of course, is working with the great talented teams. And above and beyond, I'm an audio enthusiast. I am a hobby musician. I'm doing some sports and really enjoying the challenge here in Harman. Fantastic. I love it. I mean, the more people that I speak to at Harman, the more it feels like a global family of like-minded lovers of great audio and everyone's got an interesting backstory. Uh, and co- speaking of which, coming over to yourself, Evelyn, talk to us a little bit about what you do yourself at Harman. Sure. So uh, my role here is the corporate strategy, which is really looking at the, the long-term vision for Harman and helping the businesses in implementing that vision. I've been with Harman for about uh, three and a half years and uh, been some exciting projects. It's looking at, you know, what is our business portfolio? How do we take into account existing and emerging trends? What's our competitive environment and how can we really model for new opportunities that allow us to grow the business in the long term? And uh, so I very much enjoy the role because it's really about looking into the future and bringing it back into how do we sort of like develop the business in the long term? My goodness, what an interesting job. What interesting jobs that both of you have. That's fantastic. Um, you, yeah, you've definitely both arrived at the right place. So now speaking of, you know, we're here to look at some future trends. We've just heard from Guy at Future Source that was pre-recorded there. Um, do you have any comments on those predictions that we just heard from Guy? It sounds like there's a very exciting year ahead. And we'll start with your good self, Karsten. Yes, there were a lot of data points in Guy's contents. And he's talking a lot about the growth in the premium space that the average audio device is increasing in price. And this is something that we see. He is talking about 24 being a year where true wireless will accelerate. We agree to that. And his third point was really about Canada 23 could be described as a gloomy year for consumer electronics in general. We understand that, but this is not what we see because we have been growing the business by 11%. And of course, we have in Harman the broadest audio category of the industry, one of the broadest. And we have been focusing primarily on audio and sound that you can bring along with you, sound that you can move. And these businesses have been very, very exciting to be part of. And we'll talk more about it later on. But yeah, generally, I'd say I agree to many of the observations. I think what's interesting is also to consider what is driving that development, what is behind that. Guy comes from Future Source, they are data analysts, the aggregate data. And what drives the average price of audio devices up, which is clearly something we can see. And here uh, I go back to some of the earlier comments that I've made around Decade of Sound, that it's the wireless revolution, the 3G to 4G to 5G is driving bandwidth, better connections. We're going from Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6. So no longer is the transmission the weak part of the audio chain, and that pushes the prices of the hardware products up. Outstanding. So it feels like a time of both evolution and revolution. Yes, absolutely. Exciting times indeed. Yeah. Okay. And Evelyn, coming over to yourself, uh, you just heard Carlson's take on those predictions from Guy. What is your response? Yeah, I very much agree with uh, what we just heard from Carsten. It's like the, the view that we're hearing uh, about the trends in the market are certainly similar to the views that we have about the market. Uh, we, we differ in some some areas, but Generally, I think what's interesting is what we're seeing, how 2024 is shaping up 
is going to be very different than I think what we saw in 23. In a sense that 23 was a transition year. We all sort of, everything came out of the pandemic, the supply chain normalized, everything sort of started to go back to normal. Uh, and now 2024 is the like, what is that new normal? You know, what are sort of like the sites that consumers uh, are looking sort of like to, to explore? What are sort of like ways of how they're differently also looking at experiencing audio? And how that then impacts how we're selling our products, uh, I think is going to be really interesting to watch. You know, when you look at the trend in headphones for both in-ear and over-ear, it's really about consumers looking to take their music experience with them wherever they are. And the changes in technology from miniaturization to improved ergonomics really have made that possible. And now you're adding more new technology to that with Bluetooth LE audio and more Wi-Fi available in more spaces, where once of a sudden you can take all of that higher quality content, higher quality audio streaming and take it with you. And so that form factor is really benefiting from that. And so it's interesting to see how that is pushing that market forward. I think where we a little bit disagree and it's based on our strength in the home audio market is sort of like the outlook for home audio. Yes, it's dependent on the TV market and yes, it's dependent on home entertainment preferences. But I think what we've seen is a shift during the pandemic is consumers are really starting to look more for quality of sound rather than just quantity of speakers in the home. And that's really, I think, where we see the, the opportunity. And you look at like the new JBL Authentics that really feeds into that, really allowing people to experience audio differently in the home and have that flexibility. So I think there's opportunity to still grow that market by just taking a little bit of a different approach to it. Indeed, quality over quantity, and you might even say awesome is the new normal. So I would invite each of you just to have a think about what's important to the modern consumer for the year ahead. And I'll start with yourself, Karsten. Of course, there are several drivers around personalization, miniaturization. Above all, uh, we'll see that sound quality, high level will continue to be the driving force. And under that, you have all the developments around spatialization in headphones, in conference systems, and you have uh, more and more availability of high-res audio streams. And I think the reviews and the recognition of devices will be based on their audio quality. When we're looking at what consumers really want in our insight studies, this can sound a little funny, but sound quality when buying audio products is scoring the highest in all categories. So sound quality overall, I would say. Yeah, 100%. Great share. Thank you, Karsten. And coming over to yourself, Evelyn, what would you say is a trend that you would like to highlight as being very important to the modern consumer in 2024? Yeah, to me, it's like it starts with the high quality audio, absolute front and center. That's the main thing. But when we think about where innovation is going to take place or has to also take place, I think it's in that area of personalization. To me, that's a really complex challenge. It, it requires really listening and learning from consumers. And there's so many dimensions to that when you think about what makes a great experience or a personal experience. There's like that physical media, like taking on your record player, taking on your records to digital music. You have music as background, like when you're in the elevator, or you got music in the foreground where you're actually listening and actively listening. Uh, you have so many different devices and through that many different options. And are you using your phone? Are you using something else or like to get that content from? And it's really almost like personal. It's emotional about, you know, when you think about personalization, it's not abstract. It's really about finding where are those consumer passions and uh, how do you connect to the identity of a consumer that will be the biggest challenge, I think, for us. Like wh where we are today is more like we're sort of like at the edge of that, right? We take things like noise cancellation in headphones. That removes a problem, right? The problem of I have too much noise around me, but it doesn't necessarily change the actual music experience or the personal experience. So how do we get there? That's, I think, one of those areas we just have to like really look at more like, you know, how do we go beyond scrolling of lists and looking at pictures and text? 
what are really those new opportunities? That's why I'm curious to see what, what innovation we're seeing coming out of gaming, movies, or sort of like other areas and how they find their way into mainstream. What a really spot on comment there, you know, looking at different sectors, how they're going to overlap, how it's going to all grow together uh, and innovate together. And this leads beautifully on to my next question. We're going to stay with your good self, Evelyn. And this is, what does the acquisition of Rune by Harman mean for the year ahead in audio? This is really like when you look at the acquisition of Rune, it's about looking in that world of personalization. It's taking a little bit of a, a leap away from our core hardware business and saying like, who's that consumer? What are they looking for? And how do we create connections to that? It's moving the consumer at the center from being the device at the center and how we interact with it. And so we think that, you know, Rune is one way of how you kind of can identify sort of you have a unique challenge of you have music enthusiasts. Uh, you want to enable them to really tap into their own music files and experience high quality music, no matter what, what the source, plus some of like their uh, sort of streaming services to also see like how you can bring all of that and keep that in one platform. Um, but it's also about, you know, really being passionate about high quality audio, enabling sort of like the transmission of that to any device. That's actually another thing that attracted us to Rune was the, it's an open ecosystem. So many companies now are about building closed ecosystems and locking everybody into just their own brand. Rune is about creating an open ecosystem. It has more than 160 brands, more than a thousand different devices that it recognizes and optimizes the high quality play out to. That's something that's very different and it's gotten rewarded by its, by its users, by its subscribers by really them being attracted to the platform, willing to pay for having that additional experience and also willing to be part of that community that develops and engages with kind of creating new and different features. So that's a completely new experience for us and we're learning a lot in that process. Um, and we're really curious to see how bringing sort of like harm and resources to Rune can allow us to create to create more features, add more content, different tools, and, and allow that existing user base to have an even better experience. And then we'll see where, where are the other areas with other groups of customers, you know, where, where we could create other new products and new and different experiences over time. So Rune is sort of like step one in maybe looking at many different and new opportunities on creating sort of like more personalized experiences. So think of it as step one in a journey. And uh, so we're very excited about seeing kind of what the future holds in that regard. Fantastic. Step one in a very exciting journey indeed. Now, my personal motto is ABC, always be connecting. And I think connecting is kind of an exciting route forward in so many respects. Now, Karsten, I would like to put you on the spot and ask you to choose a piece of Harman news that you are most excited about here in Las Vegas at Harman Explorer. And also <laughs> share with the listeners why it's exciting for you. It is a tough spot because uh, I'm excited about many, many directions. But uh, what we have here, our party box assortment, our innovation in party box, headphones, we bring a lot of innovation. We won 10 CES Innovation Awards, more than any other audio company. But I understand you're a tough man. Uh, <laughs> ask me to, to select one. Yes. It's got to be JB Authentics. Oh, yeah. And why? Uh, because first of all, it's based on our new common technology platform, the one platform a technology that goes across categories and multiple devices that allows us to provide new value proposition, new ways you can manage the sound. It's the first product ever that has dual consecutive voice. So Alexa and Google active at the same time. And above all, when you look at the Authentics 500, best of CES award, it's bass performance, it's audio performance, Dolby Atmos Spatial Audio. It's a very versatile product. So that would be my choice. That is such a good choice. 
I mean, everything about the Authentics 500 is impressive. It's right, the way it looks, the way it the sounds. The way it looks, yes. Oh. There are many other products that are exciting, but uh, we would need two hours to go through all of that. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe we rest the case, right? <laughs> okay, fantastic. Right, I've got one more question for each of you, and it's a very important question we ask to each and every one of our VIP guests, and that is to choose a track for our title playlist. So if you were going to break out the Authentics 500 at home and, you know, stick on your face, favorite jam to dance around the sitting room uh, what would it be and we'll start with your good self Karsten I think it's by time we get some Miles Davis on the playlist right an album I'm listening a lot these days when I'm in chill out mood is Miles Davis kind of blue and I just love that album right and it's trending in my house right now so that's my choice That is such a good combination for the Authentics 500 right there. Mental note to self, dear listeners. And coming over to yourself, Evelyn, please feel free to add some tracks to our title playlist. I think that in the spirit of really putting those uh, speakers and headphones to the test, I'd say there's one song I think that, that would be great for that. It's like Platinum by Big Frida. Oh, yeah. And wow. uh, if I want to throw in one more, it's Best Friend by Sophie Tucker. Beautiful. My goodness. Those are three wonderful tracks from both of you there to join our title playlist. So uh, I am going to add to your tracks uh, so a little icing on the cake, a, an old track by Otis Clay from the 1970s called The Only Way Is Up, because I feel that song really captures the mood of audio for 2024. So thank you so much for joining us here live in Las Vegas and bringing your A-game, your best crystal balls and some great music to Audio Talks. Thank you so much, Karsten Olsen. Well, Well, thanks for having us. And thank you so much, Evelyn Heinbach. Thank you and have a great rest of the day. Listeners, don't forget to subscribe, comment and share Audio Talks with your friends and family. If you're enjoying the Audio Talk series of podcasts, why not pop over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you get your favorite podcasts and leave a nice review. It really does mean a lot and it helps new listeners get to know about the amazing guests we talk to in every episode. For more exclusive content, some behind the scenes goodies and maybe even some competitions, connect with us over on the Instagram. You can find us at Audio Talks Podcast. We'll be back soon for some more futuristic Audio Talks. Talks. See you next time.